Hello everyone and welcome back to Steven Plays Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers. My name is Steven George, I play video games, today it's Magic. When we last left off, we killed Liliana Vess, took her to town, and beat her over a post. It's ridiculous. Anyway, today we're taking on Jace Bellerin, the first time we've had to encounter Blue Magic. There's a reason for that. Blue Magic can be tough to deal with. Blue Magic is manipulative magic. He will control the game, he will uh, take the spells I'm casting and say, no you don't and uh, not allow me to cast them. Now we are currently using white, I think we should switch back over to red. Is there a reason I'm using red against blue? Uh, eh, not in particular, I just feel like red is a good color for blue because um, there's a few creatures that they may cast um, that are defenders that are really good and red is going to help us get rid of those creatures using its burn spells. Now the downside is that red has a lot of burn spells. A lot of times you think you're going to win the game by casting a lava axe. Blue says no. So uh, we're going to we're going to be careful. This is going to be a tough fight, but we're going to give it our all. Jace Bellerin, let's get it on. All right, Jace plays first. I have no lands. Screw that. Now I got three lands and uh, Flame Wave Invoker. Uh, that this could be a good one. Um, blue tends to take their time. They tend to take a while before they get things situated. So I think by turn three, I should be able to get this guy out. He's a 2-2. And if we can wait around long enough, I'll be able to deal five damage to target player. This is a win condition. I might want this guy in my arsenal. Other goblin creatures get plus one, plus one. That'll help me for him. And uh, Incinerate's just really good to have around. And a Lava Axe. He probably won't let me have that Lava Axe, but we'll see. I'll keep it. Blue plays slowly. Um... They take their time, they uh, they don't misstep, they don't misplay, they're just very cautious. They tend not to play too many creatures, they don't worry about it too much. Let's see if he's got any turn twos. No turn twos. Got me a mountain. I need one more turn and I can get the invoker out. We got a turn three, Jace. Yes, you do. What do you have? A Phantom Warrior. Phantom Warrior is a 2-2 unblockable, meaning there is no way to stop him. It's unfortunate. What we're going to do is we're going to let that thing come into play, and before his turn ends, we are going to incinerate the stupid thing, because it will become a nuisance very quickly. Goodbye. The reason we're doing that at the end of his turn is so our mana will untap. It's a pretty good idea. Wish we would have had the shock so we didn't have to use the incinerate, but whatever. Let's bring this thing out. And go ahead and get the Flame Wave Invoker on the field. We want to get it out before he can manipulate it in some way and keep us from getting it out. Because if we can wait around five more turns, assuming we get all our mana drops, which we won't, um, we can start bashing with that ability, and that would be pretty sweet. I'm a fan of that. Now what are you doing? Cloud Elemental is a 2-3 flying. The Cloud Elemental can only block creatures with flying. So if we attack with something on the ground... He's not going to be able to block us. Pretty uh, pretty sweet, actually. I'm, I'm a fan of that. Alright, got plenty of mana. So things are actually going our way in terms of being able to cast um, the uh, Flame Wave Invoker's ability. Uh, let's get the Goblin King... Actually, no. I was going to say let's get the Goblin King on the field, but let's do four damage while we can. Uh, put this guy out on the field. He's a haste guy, so we're going to be able to swing for six right now. I am fan. The Cloud Elemental, Elemental can only block creatures with flying. He's not going to be able to block. Jace is going to go down to 16. I am a big fan of that. Alright, Jace, your turn. Let's see what you got. You're going to swing for two, whatever, but you were flying. I couldn't block you in the first place. Okay, you're going to take me to 18. And... Oh boy. An air elemental is a 4-4 four, four flyer. Ouch. Obviously, I'm not a fan of that. I do have an enrage. Target creature gets plus X plus zero into end of turn. That could be useful. Let's get this mountain to play. He doesn't have any mana. Now is a good time to hit him with whatever I want to hit him with. Uh, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to hit him with Lava Axe before. I can hit him with Lava Axe right now. That's... Hmm... That's tempting. In fact, um, I'm going to have to do that. Lava Axe time. Bam. 
That feels so good. Jace is usually really hard. Now I'm going to swing with the 4-1. Uh, if he blocks, he's going to have to block with the 4-4, killing his 4-4. And if he doesn't block, well, then screw him. I did, I did 4 damage to him. What you going to do, man? I'm coming at you hard. Not going to block. Jace is down to 5. Another Lava Axe would win the game. Probably not going to happen, but hey, it could. Attack with both? No, just the 2 3. Okay, so I'm at 16. What you going to play? A Cloud Sprite, which is a 1 1 flying that can only block creatures with flying. Like a mini version of the Cloud Elemental. And then he's going to cast a Snapping Drake, which is a 3 2 flyer. All these flyers are starting to worry me, honestly. Before I let his turn pass, I want to decide quickly if I want to use Shock. Because I could use Shock and kill off that Snapping Drake. Probably a good idea. Oh, wait. Oh, crap. I don't have any mana. Piss. All right. Whatever. <laughs> it would have been a good idea. All right. Now I have a Piker. I do have Shock. He doesn't have any mana available to him, which is good. That's a good thing. And uh, he's going to be getting kind of worried. Because um, at the moment... He only has 5 life, so he's scared. I could shock him and do 2 damage to him, which, I don't know, might be a good idea as well. Let's decide. I do have Enrage, so if any of my creatures get through, I can kill him. Kill him dead. Kill him super dead. <laughs> um, let's see. I mean, I could shock, and then he's going to probably be forced to block nearly... Hmm. It's really weird, because based on what I have in my hand, things go many different ways. I'm in really great board position. I mean, I'm not worried about a freaking thing. Um, I just want to make sure that I play it out correctly. You will have the Cloud Elemental untapping next turn, which is something to worry about, although those things can only block creatures with flying. So can the Cloud Sprite, so I'm not worried too much about it. Let's do Shock. And uh, Shock his Snapping Drake. All right. Now, we should have already won. Have you figured it out? Take a look. We have a 4-1 and a 2-2. That 1-1 over there can only block creatures with flying, so it can't block us. That 4-4 is going to block the 4-1, because why would it block the 2-2? With that 2-2, we're going to do 2 damage. Jace would be left with 3. However, if we play in Rage, we'll give our guy plus 3, doing 5 damage. Meaning, pretty sure we won this battle. Uh, let's continue on to the attack phase. Let's swing with both of these guys. And uh, see what he does. Who are you going to block with? You have to block or you lose. He's blocking with one guy. He decided that he was going to block the 2-2. Which makes sense, I guess, because if he blocks the 2-2 and he kills it, I won't be able to use his special ability. Unfortunately, he did not plan for the fact that I have Enrage. I can spend any amount of mana... And I'm going to tap all of them. So I'm going to be able to give my guy plus three, plus three. And I'm going to give it on my lightning elemental. Which is overkill. I become a 7-1 and swing for seven. Good night, sweet prince. You're dead. Bam! Steven plays wins again! Honestly, the battles with Jace in the past that I've done have been insanely difficult, so that one went really well. Uh, but, I mean, we just played it smart. We used red, we came in swinging, we didn't let him keep his creatures. I mean, at the end of his turn, when he was casting a guy, I said, No, son, you put that away. I'm incinerating that Phantom Warrior. Didn't let him start out, because he never had a foothold, uh, he didn't get to keep his stuff. We have earned the Cinder Pyromancer, it's a 0-1 for 3. You can tap it to deal 1 damage to target player. And whenever you cast a red spell, you get to untap him. That's awesome. So imagine, if if you will, that you uh, use his ability, you tap, and you do one damage to the player, and then you put in a creature. Now, your guy untaps, and you can hit him again. Now you play Shock. He untaps, you get to do it again. So it's kind of like a prodigal pyromancer that you can use over and over and over again. Big fan. We also unlocked Jace's deck, Thoughts of Wind. Cool. So now we have beaten five people. Next up will be Nissa Rebane. 
If you enjoyed this episode in any capacity, please click like. If you haven't done so already, highly consider subscribing to Steven Plays. There's a new video game episode every single day. And be sure to join us next time when we will take on Nissa Ravain, who is using a black-green deck. First time we will uh, be seeing a multicolor deck. They're very interesting. The strategies kind of weld together, and um, it can be very, very difficult. But I'm sure we will uh, we'll take her out with relative ease, maybe. Be sure to join us next time and find out. Thanks for watching.